So I wanted to do a quick video on what it takes to get into the information security field. Now, the first thing is to understand that information security can mean a lot of different things. If you want to get in the field, the key first step is to try to figure out which concentration you want to focus on. Information security is a vast field with many different specializations, and no one can tr be truly adept at all of them. Because there are so many different potential areas of focus, there's really no singular career path. It could be a winding road of discovery that ultimately leads you to the realm within cybersecurity in which you flourish. But try to focus on acquiring a broad set of skills at the onset and then focus in on your specialization gradually. It is also important to note the distinction between managerial and technical career paths. In a lot of fields, the traditional vision is that you work your way through the ranks to be a leader and manage people who are where you were. In this field, that's not necessarily true. The technical folks may have neither the, de the desire or capability of managing other technical folks. You may not have the technical acumen necessary to be a hacking guru, but your team building and coordination skills are exactly what's needed for leading a pack of threat hunters. Now, it's widely advertised that there's a talent shortage in information security. Counterintuitively, it's also one of the most difficult fields to break into. So how is it that so many people are interested in getting into information security or having such a hard time finding positions when there are so many of them available? And that's the conundrum. And the problem isn't you, the fledgling with a ton of potential just looking for a chance. The problem is the industry. They want ent entry-level people with a ton of experience. Huh? What? We are notoriously bad at identifying people that have an interest and capability in the field and then nurturing them and providing them the opportunity to face and overcome the challenge. The community tends to be a bubble that makes it unnecessarily difficult to allow others and their perspectives into the fold. I hope that I can provide some information about how you can penetrate this bubble and influence it from within. First and foremost, you're going to feel like you don't belong. You're going to feel like you're not smart enough. You're going to feel like everyone is better than you. You're going to feel like you're so far behind and that you're not going to be able to catch up. You're going to feel like there's nothing you can contribute that hasn't already been done and probably done better than by almost everyone else. Despite that, keep moving. I'll, refer I'll reference Confucius again. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. Persistence is king. You are not an imposter because you can and will add value. And there's no better depiction of this reality than of this graph. Your capability and perspective is valuable. You will always be able to provide others knowledge that they do not already have. The key is to cultivate confidence by finding ways to build experience despite constraints that the industry may place upon you. So how do you do that? I'm going to talk a bit about some of the ways you can build your skills and marketability as an information security professional, even if you don't have, quote, real world, real world experience, unquote. Okay. So certifications is a controversial topic. Are they really valuable? Do they prove that you actually learned a skill? Did you just learn the test? Is this one better than the other? These questions go on and on, but it's hard to deny that they can be a differentiator. If two candidates have the exact same resume, a certification can be a way to separate the two. Plus there are many contracting jobs out there that require a candidate to be certified in one thing or another. There are certifications out there that require companies to have certified individuals to get discounts and to remain a vendor partner. So it's not going to change that the whole sort as it's not going to change that as a whole certifications are valued within the industry. And there are certifications that are applicable to each specialization within the industry. So try to find one that is tailored for your concentration and explore what's needed to obtain it. Now, a college degree, level my hate them, is also a big leg up. The first line in most job postings is to have a bachelor's degree. 
They may even trade out some years of experience requirements if you have a master's degree. And they all tend to say it needs to be in some sort of information technology field. In order to get past the recruiters who filter through applications, this could be a sticking point for those who have degrees in other fields. If you fall into this category, I would say fret not. Before making the time and money commitment to go back to school for a technology degree, maybe invest in some of these other tips. I, I would then recommend taking some classes here and there towards a degree. If you do not have a degree at all, sadly, it's going to be a bit more of an uphill battle, but not impossible. It's one you can, un if you can undeniably prove yourself in other ways, you can surmount it. Now, Twitter. Almost every leader in every concentration in the community is on leader on Twitter in some fashion. They share their research, thoughts, current events, tools, techniques, and everything in between. I recommend creating a list in Twitter and then populating that list with them. Check in every day so you can keep up to date with the latest trends. You can also use Twitter to promote your blog. Again, do not be intimidated by posting your thoughts or current projects in a blog. Do not be hamstrung by thoughts of someone's already done this or anything else. You should focus on blogging for yourself. Collect your thoughts. Express them in the best way you know how. It'll help solidify for you concepts that you're working on. It'll also help with your ability to do technical writing, which is a key skill in information security, by the way. And having your blog is important because your perspective is unique and you may convey an idea to an audience in a way that is different than they have ever experienced before. You can use it to promote your abilities during the hiring process as well. Find a community. If there's no community in your, in your area, then start one. People will be quick to say, oh, I live somewhere where no one else, blah, 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 blah. It's an excuse and not a good one. The world is more connected than ever before. It makes it easier to, than ever to find a collection of like-minded individuals who share similar goals and aspirations. Go find them. Use Meetup, Facebook, Snapchat, Reddit, whatever you can think of to try to connect. Start a Slack channel, group chat, go hang out at Starbucks, the park, or anywhere else to share ideas. Enter Capture the Flag competitions together, build a lab for the group, do some group study for a certification. This is how you start to create and forge connections in the industry. If you're able to find an existing community, do what you can to join it. But again, beware imposter syndrome because it'll rear its ugly head again. Do not just sit back and be a lump in the group. Engage, share your goals, network, share your research. See if they can help provide feedback for you. See if they can help guide you. Make the most out of your opportunity to work with others. If you're fine that you're putting in ample effort to network and the members are not engaging you in a helpful, helpful manner, then rewind back to the start your own community section. Now, projects tend to cross significantly into programming. Here is where you can start to use a bit more creativity. Create an account on GitHub. Try to come up with a tool or utility that might be useful to people. Then you go make it. Or find a tool that you enjoy or find fascinating and rewrite it. This is all about learning. So don't let imposter syndrome creep into your psyche and tell you someone's already done this, it's better, it has prettier code, anything else. This is about learning and sharing with others what you have learned and what you can do. You are cultivating your coding abilities, cognitive abilities, you are identifying a problem and designing a solution. If you're a complete newbie to coding, consider exploring websites like Code Wars and have little challenges to help build your skill set. Again, this is something for, this is a marketing tool that you can use to help pr promote yourself and showcase your abilities. So I saved lab for last because in my opinion, it's the most essential piece. You don't have to, if you don't have hands-on experience working with operating systems, networking, identity management systems, or anything else that might exist in an enterprise environment, build a mock environment yourself. So you can familiarize, familiarize yourself with the interfaces, how they work. 
you can see how all the pieces fit together. You can see what normal operation looks like and understand what it's like to administer the system. As you're starting out, you can build a sample enterprise and grow your lab as your capabilities, as your capabilities grow. Your lab can evolve to one that facilitates your interest, interest in forensics, exploit development, or whatever your heart's content. This requires investing in some hardware, but that investment could pay dividends. The key takeaway from all of this is investment. Invest your time and resources into, into developing your skills. With your skills come confidence. Do not let that confidence waver as you progress. And no matter what you do, just make sure you progress no matter how slowly. An inch ahead is an inch further than you were, and those inches add up to miles. Thank you for listening.